Hello, my name is David Newmark. I'm a professor of economics at the University of California, Irvine, and I'm a Bren Fellow here at the Public Policy Institute of California. It's probably no news to anybody that California's labor market has suffered a great deal uh, in recent years. You may recall that not too long ago, in 2007, the unemployment rate was down below 6%, really a record low for recent decades. Uh, it's currently above 12% and has been there for a while. But it's important to realize that California's labor market problems are really twofold. There's a, there is a short-term problem of the current recession and trying to recover from it, but there's also a long-term problem. When you look at the data over the past 20 years or so, California's unemployment rate has been persistently above the nation's average, even in, even in very good times and even in boom years. As a consequence, we really need to think about policies for both the short term and the long term. There's an additional reason for that. Given the current budget difficulties, it's, it's really hard to imagine the state doing anything very aggressively uh, with respect to a short-term response to the recession. That provides yet another reason to think beyond the response to the current recession, beyond what is hopefully a temporary budget problem and what we ought to be doing in the out years. I've just completed a study that looks at evidence on two job creation policies, hiring credits and worker subsidies. And to put that in context, the, the worker subsidy with which many people are familiar is something we call the earned income tax credit, which exists at both the federal level and many other states. Let me explain the policies briefly. A hiring credit, in its simplest form, pays an employer money if it hires a new worker. And essentially what that does is reduce the cost of hiring the worker and therefore hopefully give an employer an incentive to do more hiring than they would do otherwise. Very simple, very intuitive. A worker subsidy instead pays the worker money to work, essentially operating as a subsidy to the wage. If you make a $10 an hour wage and, the federal, and you're, uh, you're eligible for the federal earned income tax credit, you actually get a 40% add-on, so your effective wage is $14 an hour. So it's a big incentive to enter the labor market. It may be a little less clear why that creates more employment, um, but in fact, if more people come out and start looking for jobs, at least in normal times, that will lead to more people, uh, more people working, it will lead to job creation. These aren't the only two possible policies one might consider in trying to, to get the labor market uh, moving again in California. The research I've done doesn't look at all of these policies. Uh, it looks at hiring credits and worker subsidies because these are the two policies that most directly change the incentives of people either to hire on the part of employers or to work on the part of employees. It turns out the conclusions about the effectiveness of these policies really differs depending on whether we're looking at the short-term problem of recovering from the recession or the long-term problem of California's persistently higher unemployment. Based on the evidence, uh, hiring credits seem the far more effective policy for addressing uh, the recession, for addressing job creation in the short term. I don't want to oversell it. We don't have lots and lots of evidence on the effectiveness of hiring credit policies, but there was a fairly massive federal hiring credit policy used in the 1970s uh, to recover from what was at the time a very serious recession from the early 1970s. There's a lot of study of that program and, and that those studies tend to conclude that that hiring credit policy was quite effective. When we think about the short term, worker subsidies, however, are probably less likely to be effective. Think about what a worker subsidy does. It creates incentives for people to look for work who perhaps aren't looking for work at the moment. Now, when unemployment rate is very high, when we hear about long queues of people applying for jobs, common sense tells us if we, if we just create incentives for more people to look for jobs, we may not accomplish anything except a higher unemployment rate. And what that, what that means in simple terms, it, it, there's a lot of slack in the labor market. If employers aren't hiring, then just getting more people to enter the labor market doesn't really help. So in the short term, worker subsidies probably would do very little. In the longer term, however, when labor markets are, are, are more in balance, then increasing supply would create employment. And there's, 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 there's strong and unambiguous evidence uh, that, that worker subsidies, like the earned income tax credit, do actually increase employment. Another advantage of worker subsidies, which is somewhat peripheral to this discussion, but, but tends to play a role in public policy, is they have good distributional impacts. Worker subsidies do a very good job of targeting poor families and a very good job of targeting, in particular, single mothers with children. So the research leads to the conclusion that hiring credits are a better short-term response, but it's important to understand that the scope can only be limited. Neither policy, hiring credits nor worker subsidies, is cheap. There's a range of estimates, hiring credits, look like they cost somewhere between about $9,000 and $75,000 per job created. Probably the estimates at the lower end are, are the more reliable ones. Worker subsidies, the range is even bigger from about $12,000 to a little over $200,000. Those, those sound like high numbers. Keep it in perspective, if we take a look at the federal stimulus spending, 
um, and, and ask how much money has been spent and use Congressional Budget Office estimates of how many jobs have been created, far more expensive. Hiring credits and worker subsidies, are, are, despite being expensive, are far cheaper than the federal stimulus money. But that's not really the right comparison. It, it, it's important to put this in context, and that context is California's difficult budget situation. It's hard to imagine, for example, the state spending, say, more than a billion dollars on a hiring credit program, given that we're trying to cut somewhere between 10 and 20 billion. Um, estimates of, of, of the, the, these cost estimates suggest that if the state were to spend a billion dollars, we could at most reduce the unemployment rate by about half a percentage point, so from 12.4 to 11.9, let's say. We could at most create about 100,000 new jobs uh, and likely more in the 20 to 30 to 40,000 range. Those aren't trivial numbers, those are real jobs for real people, uh, but that's, that's really not that much compared to the scale of the overall recession. Uh, we may not like the fact uh, that policy can't solve this problem, but the bottom line is it's national economic recovery that's going to help really bring California back to where it was. So this research doesn't lead to a set of specific endorsements of, of one policy or another. Uh, what it does say is if the state wants to try to take steps uh, to, to spur job creation, a couple of lessons emerge. First. Insofar as we're focusing on the short term, recovering from the, the recent recession, hiring credits are the best policy. Uh, second, it's important to think about how to make hiring credits effective. Uh, there's a number of things that the research says are important. First, it's important to target the unemployed, in particular the recently unemployed. Try to get those people back to work. Uh, second, it's important to create incentives for new job creation. Even in a recession, some firms are hiring while other firms are, are, are not hiring. And we always want to be careful not to, not to pay employers for the hiring they would have done anyways. On the other hand, it's important to do that in a way that doesn't create lots of complicated administrative procedures and rules for businesses because if the cost of, of tapping into a credit is high, many businesses will say, especially small businesses, it's not worth it. Um, it's also important to, to avoid a, a specific hiring credit for new hiring of the unemployed from morphing into general tax relief and just becoming lower taxes for businesses generally. There may be reasons we want to have lower taxes for businesses generally, that's a separate issue, but uh, hiring credits have to keep their focus on getting the recently unemployed back to work. In the longer term, as I said, uh, worker subsidies are probably a, a more effective policy. I think there's good reason for the state to think very seriously about enacting a state earned income tax credit. Uh, many states have done this, and it's very easy to piggyback on the, on the federal earned income tax credit. If you look at state tax forms where they, they have a state EITC, it's literally a couple of lines once you've done the federal calculation to figure out what a family gets from the state earned income tax credit, and it's done through the existing administrative structure of the, taxing, the, the tax revenue system uh, for state income taxes. So very easy to do, very little administrative burden. I think the final point uh, to make is, in some sense, it's a little unsatisfying that we're worrying about policies to create job creation uh, quite a long time after the recession has hit, and, and almost by, by most indications, a period when the economy is already recovering. Uh, I think what's, what's actually very important is, is, to, is to plan ahead. This has been a terrible recession. It's not the last recession we'll have. Hopefully the next recession won't be nearly as severe. But having a policy on the books of a hiring credit that turns on aggressively as when the economy starts to slow and as soon as the economy starts to slow, and then as the economy recovers to more normal levels of activity, actually shuts down, uh, it is really the right way to go. That kind of policy would have helped cushion the blow uh, the state suffered uh, during the current recession. I want to thank you very much for listening to this discussion.